Okay, I will call the meeting to order. It's uh, 6.31 p.m. Uh, we'll commence today's uh, proceedings with swearing in of uh, our new District 2 Council member. We're trying to get a picture of you. Okay. What do you get from what you're saying? Okay. Aye. Take your name. Aye. Pilling Khan. To solemnly affirm. That to, to solemnly affirm that. I will faithfully execute. I will faithfully execute. The office of city councilor. The office of city councilor. For the city of Montpelier. For the city of Montpelier. And will. Therein do equal right. Will do in. Could you please speak? And, and will therein. And will therein. Do equal right. Do equal right. And justice. And justice. To all. To all people. To the best of my judgment and abilities. To the best of my judgment and abilities. According to law. According to law. And I also. And I also solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will be true, that I will be true and, faithful and faithful to the state of Vermont, to the state of Vermont, and that I will not, that I will not directly or indirectly, directly or indirectly do any act or thing, do any act or thing injurious, injurious to the constitution, to the constitution thereof. Thereof, as established, as established by convention, by convention. So help me God. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> you don't want to stay for the rest of the meeting? Yeah. <laughs> oh, congratulations, uh, Councillor Cohn. Um, now, <clears throat> call call the meeting to order. We will. Uh, I'll review the logistics. We will. Uh, if you're joining remotely, please change your name on screen to your first and last name so you can be addressed properly when you speak either uh, in person or uh, remotely. Please start by stating your name and where you live. We ask that you keep your uh, comments or questions to two minutes and uh, Councillor Bate will assist us in uh, keeping time. If you're Speaking about a specific agenda item, please keep your comments germane to the topic at hand. Anyone who wishes to be uh, speak must to speak must be recognized by the chair. Uh, once you are recognized, you can make a statement or ask questions. Uh, but we do not uh, consider public comment to be an opportunity for debate. If you speak out of turn discuss non-germane topics, go on too long, you may be interrupted and asked to adjust your comments or behavior. Um, first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is anyone uh, aware of any changes we should be making to the agenda tonight? Okay, hearing none, the agenda is approved. First item on the 
agenda is general business and appearances. This is an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council about uh, any topic that is not on tonight's agenda. Again, we ask uh, speakers to limit their comments to uh, two minutes. Is there anyone in the room who wishes to be uh, to address the council? Steve. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, the website still needs the, the website needs a committee of informed people to debate whether to switch software. That software is a dog. It's not conducive to participation or finding things. There's like four point type in the window and 14, 16 point type in the left panel. It's just a mess. It, there are, is good software out there that doesn't download every document with some gibberish, but actually maintains the name of the document you're downloading, therefore expediting participation. Um, the garbage, the trash problem has been recurring. The garbage cans overflow. The contractor apparently is not on our schedule that works. Uh, the dog crap sits on top, gets knocked off, gets run over. It's, it's a mess. And it seems like I'm the only one to notice the Christmas litter, uh, the, the wreaths that blew down, the ribbons that blew down and were laying in the street. Uh, just it's as if no one who is responsible and getting paid to keep this stuff tidy uh, is is present. Um, the mud has piled up again in the Elm Street crosswalk, Elm Street at state, because I've I think it's five or six years now I've been saying that those that was ground down too low. The drainage doesn't hit the drain. The ice builds up. It's, again, mismanagement on a grand scale. Uh, CVPSA, I, I ask that you do the right thing and direct your two representatives, Doug Hoyt and Justin Breschler, to not move to dissolve it. You, you've set in motion as did the city of Barrie, to move to withdraw. You owe it to the voters to allow them the opportunity to weigh in on that. To dissolve the authority prior to the time of the voters would be a disservice. It would be a slap in the face to the voters' prerogative. Uh, it would be unethical, but that's par for the course. Um, the State House restroom bill that was introduced today or it wasn't introduced today, it was discussed in committee today, H34. Your uh, prior colleague, Connor Casey, has offered a bill to further drag out public restrooms for another year and a half with a study done, contracted for this fall with a report back next in 2024. And it's just, it's unconscionable that we've got Trent restrooms, public restrooms paid for by public dollars in the transit center and in the city hall, and you're not allowing people to use it. It's a simple question of staffing, cleaning, and supervision. We've got police right across the parking lot to supervise city hall bathrooms being open. There's no excuse for it. It's disingenuous feet dragging, and it's a denial of courtesy to the old people, the young people, the unhoused, and the tourists. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the room who wishes to? Yes. hoping this is the right public place to speak. I just wanted to stop today. Hi, I'm Tina Muncy, yeah. and I live in Montpelier. And I came tonight to tell you how disappointed I am in the city manager, the prior mayor, and the city council, because my understanding is you're going to present a budget to the people of Montpelier that's a 7.5% increase from last year. I wish to speak for people my age who will now be paying a monthly pay equal for their taxes equal to what they paid for a mortgage payment when they bought their houses. Now, let me be quick to say I'm one of the privileged few with a house. So there are a lot of people in Montpelier who can't afford a house, not only because the price of the houses, but because of their taxes. So one might ask, 
what do I get for my taxes? Well, I don't get my garbage picked up. I don't get smooth streets. And I do on a regular basis get water pipes that break, flood the streets so people can't have water. So, oh, oh yes. And then there was the state that suggested to the city of Montpelier that the uh, pressure was too high and that they needed to consider that. My understanding is the city manager, even though I would say he's been here longer than any of you and he probably knew about the problems with the water system, has not taken that, is not addressing that, or has not agreed with the state. And I will also say you as a city council recommended that uh, the people of Montpelier buy a large piece of land in the last budget. Interesting, but to me amusing in that that piece of land will need to have significant infrastructure, no matter what you do with it. You already own a lot of land in which the infrastructure is not well cared for. So I'm gonna to end tonight where I began to say, I'm really disappointed because I believe this people of Montpelier vote yes every year for the city budget because they trust the people they've elected to do what's best for the city. And I'm sorry, the evidence is coming in that you're not doing what's best for the city. So I'm disappointed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tina. Anybody else in the room wants to address the council? And I am not seeing any hands raised uh, online. If if you're online and you want to be heard, please uh, speak up or wave or something so we can see. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody. So, uh, yes. Uh, just I'm leaving uh, because the budget process, budget hearing, it's already been cast like last year. There's not, it's not worth participating in a charade that you really want input on the budget. Next, next up, we have the uh, consent agenda. Oh, yes, go ahead. Not to his point, but to Tina's point. Um, I'm not going to just thanks for your comments, Tina. I just want to be clear. Um, you mentioned the water pressure issue. And um, I would, without getting into a long thing, I'd say there's a whole lot of misinformation that went out about that. And uh, we certainly do have high water pressure. We do disagree with the conclusion of the state. And at the state's uh, request, we recently conducted an independent study um, of our system, we'll be releasing that shortly. But basically the conclusion was water pressure is not the issue. The city should continue to replace lines as they are able to financially. Um, so I would take issue that we have ignored a problem. We've actually had a system in place where we've been systematically upgrading lines within the authority. I'd also point out um, that councils and managers before I was here uh, had been discussing this issue and they, um, they made what I believe is the correct decision to go forward with water treatment plan. If we don't have clean water, it doesn't matter if the lines are breaking, people were getting diseases from our, our water. Uh, and that has sucked up about five to $600,000 a year in debt payments, um, which is slow, shortly coming to an end, which can then be reinvested in more aggressive upgrading of lines. So I think you know the city made the correct decision to put in a water treatment plant. We've been trying to fix lines as we've been financially able to, We've developed a long-term plan. We recently, as recently as 2015, did a study of all of our water systems so we'd know how to prioritize. And as I said, we just did another one. So appreciate the concern. None of us like the water breaks, including our own staff. Nobody likes having water being out. It's a huge problem. Um, but I want you to be sure that we have, in fact, been on top of it, aware of it. And we do professionally disagree with the state about pressure issues. Thanks, Bill. Okay, next item on the agenda is the uh, consent agenda. Does somebody want to? I move the consent agenda. I'll second it. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Opposed? Consent agenda is passed. Next item on the agenda is the, uh, keep up here, is the first public hearing on the budget. So I'm gonna do a little. Turning the lights out. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, so, we had a couple comments already about the budget and the process. So, we're clear about what has happened and what has not happened. Uh, city staff presented the budget, uh, which followed the preliminary guidelines of the council to stay within um, the rate of inflation. And then that budget was presented in December. The council held a couple of meetings, made um, minor adjustments to it, and are now uh, and adopted uh, it as the preliminary budget. So I just I see a comment that the online people might not be able to hear us. I can't even hear you. Okay, Mike seems much lower than usual. The they're working on it. Yep. Sure. Check. 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 Yep. There you go. How are we doing? Is that better? Okay. I'll just sort of lean here. Okay, so here we are. This is the first public hearing on the budget. I'll just repeat what I just said. Um, uh, this the city uh, staff, through me, through the city manager, presented a budget to the city council in December. Uh, and the council's preliminary guidance had been to stay within um, the inflation rate, which at the time was, well, it was 7.5% at the time that we were preparing the budget. It actually dropped to 7.1% when... Uh, the day actually that we presented the budget. Uh, so the city council held two meetings, uh, made some minor adjustments to the budget and voted to bring it to public hearing. So they will have a public hearing tonight, public hearing in two weeks. And uh, after that, we'll make a final vote on what does and doesn't go to the budget, to the count, to the voters to consider. So earlier comments about, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what the city council is going to do, but certainly the whole purpose of the public hearing is to hear from people their suggestions uh, of what they would like to see added or removed from the budget. So that's what we're uh, here to do. So our budget goals, when we prepare the budget every year, we have some things we try to do. So uh, the city council adopts a, a strategic plan, sets priorities for the community and uh, in different policy areas. So obviously the biggest tool to implement the strategic plan is through the annual budget. Uh, part of that is to retain and stabilize our staffing levels. Over the last couple of years, we've seen unprecedented uh, vacancies in our city uh, positions. Uh, we can't deliver our core services. Uh, someone just referenced, what do I get for my taxes? And a lot of that is services that are delivered by individuals, and we have not been able to deliver them as consistently as we would like. So part of our goal is to have full staffing levels. 
To continue our investment in infrastructure, uh, we certainly did fall behind on road paving during the pandemic years due to revenue shortfalls. Last This past year, we've made a significant catch up and we hope to continue to do that in the next couple of years. Uh, to deliver responsible services, people need uh, police, fire, public works, road plowing, uh, all the recreation, senior, all the things that we provide. And finally, to stay within the, the, range, of, the <clears throat> range of the inflation rate which again in November was 7.1%. There we go. So looking at our strategic goals, uh, number one, well, they're not in any particular order. Improved community prosperity is one of those goals. So we've earmarked $100,000 for economic development. That was our pre-pandemic amount. Uh, And the idea is to divert that funding for the next couple of years to the Country Club Road Project. Uh, so that we don't have to increase budget funds for that. We've retained $45,000 for the Homelessness Task Force. Uh, That is primarily for uh, outreach services, Uh, but clearly this is a growing need in our community. And uh, I think we will see even a greater need uh, at the end of March once the hotel program ends. Our community fund, which funds our nonprofits primarily, it's been held steady at $134,150. I think they're about to start their process of awarding those grants. We've kept uh, $32,600 for Montpelier Alive and $10,000 for the Public Arts Fund. Oops, I'm going backwards. There we go. Uh, Another goal is to provide responsible and engaged uh, government. So we've uh, talking about upgrading the infrastructure. As you can see, our mics and things don't always work as well as we would like. We'd like to, and our visuals aren't great. So we're hoping to improve the experience in this room for people attending and for people participating. We are continuing to work on our uh, ADA, Americans with Disability Act transition plan. Uh, We are required by the federal government to eventually transition all of our facilities to be fully accessible, which we would like to do anyway. Our big project this year is upgrading the elevator in the uh, city hall, which has been um, problematic. I mentioned earlier, fully staffed city departments. We have a, uh, to meet the increasing demand for public communications, we have a part-time communications coordinator now, which we will expand full-time. We will continue the community stipend program. Uh, Last year was started and I think uh, needs probably another full year to Uh, see its effectiveness. This was intended to provide stipends for people participating on committees uh, for whom it was an economic hardship. Uh, Perhaps they need a babysitter, perhaps they need to eat, uh, those kinds of things. The Social Economic Justice Advisory Committee was retained for $10,000. And again, we've retained $15,000 for legislative advocacy, which is essentially hiring a professional advocacy firm to represent the city's interests on a daily basis at the state house in addition to our own uh, city officials. This will be the third year that we've done that. Create more housing, which is uh, one of probably the two biggest needs in the city along with infrastructure. Um, so we uh, recommending level, uh, fully funding the housing trust fund at 110,000, but also allocating that fund for um, the country club road project. So along with the uh, 100,000 in economic development and a, an additional 40,000 that we have in the budget. Uh, that would be 250,000 this year for the planning work. Uh, we can talk more about that later. Um, the housing committee may have some feelings about that. They did let us know about that, but that was the staff recommendation to the council. Practice good environmental stewardship. Um, we are looking at our first truck purchase for DPW, a uh, pickup truck, of course. Electric mowers uh, are We are working to uh, convert the entire DPW complex to renewable energy, uh, which includes reworking some of the bond language from last year. We will be completing our capital needs assessment and sustainability, basically giving us the roadmap for all of our facilities that need to be upgraded and uh, and also brought to uh, code for ADA. We're continuing to fund MyRide for $40,000 to give people an alternative transportation to uh, driving. Confluence Park uh, has been a a project. Uh, There's some question whether we will proceed with this. So we're reworking the bond language to give the council more options. And there'll be a discussion, I believe, in February with the updated plan and uh, perhaps a decision on on what we're going to do then. And finally, actually, we won't be having a charter change, but we are proposing a stormwater utility. 
and that ordinance and um, proposal will be coming to the council in a more full fashion this spring. And that will allow us to address stormwater issues uh, throughout the community. So to build and maintain uh, in, uh, our sustainable infrastructure, we maintained our funding at 2.149 million in our capital improvement and equipment plan. The good news is that's the same funding as last year. The bad news is we really want to be at our goal of 2.5 million uh, where we were pre-pandemic. Um, so that is something we will continually be looking at, particularly for next year. Uh, however, that's bolstered by 2.2 million in ARPA funding, uh, 1.1 million of which basically funded projects that had been cut due to pandemic shortages. And we'll talk about the, the next 1.1 million in a bit. The rec center, of course, we have a, a huge investment, uh, a huge liability on Barry Street with our rec center, uh, needing six to eight million just to rehab it in place. And so we are uh, hoping to invest uh, in a future rec facility at the Country Club Road site, and then consider what uh, reuse uh, for the rec center would happen. Putting $7.2 million into East State Street, uh, some of that is grant funding that would that will completely redo the street, all the subsurface, water, sewer, stormwater infrastructure, rebuild the roads uh, at the base, do sidewalks, new street, I mean, completely rebuild street um, when it is completed, including a new uh, CSO outflow, uh, again, to reduce our uh, sewage overflows and storm conditions. We approved last year, the 550, these were all approved last year, but there are still projects to be done. So when we talk about investing in infrastructure, this is work to be done. Um, the Barry Main intersection is still waiting to, for its streetlight and improvements. Uh, we can't really proceed on that until the railroad does some improvements it's, it's going to be going right through there. So we, have, we are waiting for them to complete this project. And uh, upgrading our streetlights, our downtown's already been upgraded to uh, LEDs, and we're going to be completing that project throughout the year for the rest of the community. So we will be getting better light and saving uh, energy. Uh, improving public health and safety, uh, we're continuing purchasing body-worn cameras for our police department. That's been a, a, a very successful project, and we've been continuing that. Uh, we will be investing in a policy uh, software platform. I'm sure the chief could speak more about that, but allowing uh, the police to function more efficiently. We have implemented a grant-supported canine unit uh, fully deployed with grant funds, so the uh, Atlas is on the job now. And we are completing implementation of the Crisis Intervention Team Program, which is a big innovation for us to be able to deal with people in mental health crisis or any kind of crisis for that matter. Again, um, Chief Nordenson can speak to that more fully. So taking a look at our capital equipment plan, if you look at where it says total budget, you can see that the total is the same. Uh, that's the good news. As I said, the bad news is that we are not up to the 2.4, 2.5 million where we'd like to be. More bad news is because of the infl implementation of the debt of some of those projects, we have less annual money this year to work with. Uh, so we will not have as much money for new projects this year, however, given the backlog of big projects that we have, there will still be a fair amount, um, quite a bit of infrastructure work being done. Uh, so we've got some uh, street paving money in, we're gonna replace a bridge. Uh, we've got some transportation projects, sidewalks. Uh, I'm just highlighting what people can see here. Um, again, we have DPW here, we'd be happy to go into more of these in detail um, if needed. And then equipment, we uh, again, looking primarily at DPW equipment, uh, new police cruiser, uh, which is an annual cycle. It's not a, a new additional uh, cruiser. Those are the main equipment purchases. And then our ARPA funding. Um, so we're taking a look at the 1.2 uh, funding that we had left over. Well, excuse me, at the, the 2.2 that has been, we were awarded. We can go through and you can see here where we did is put 620,000 to defer, delayed roads and uh, bridges and retaining walls, another 420,000 to deferred equipment purchases. So that was done with the first batch. The second batch has been allocated, uh, well, actually it was done last year for the Housing Trust Fund to restore its funding uh, to, to implement our community outreach program. So that included the public survey that we did this year, our part-time communications program, We've allocated 425,000 for vulnerable populations, public restrooms, and uh, another needs we're waiting a study to recommend uh, what we do with that. 
We'll be implementing an electric vehicle charging station, uh, possibly at the public works department for vehicles or uh, available to the public as we wait for public works vehicles. Uh, we put 400, um, we've talked a little bit about water and sewer lines. We put $450,000 of that into water and sewer infrastructure. We already spent about 325,000 of that. Uh, and then we allocated last year uh, funds to the Barry Recovery res Residence for Moms and Kids. That's a one-time expense. And then we're allocating 70,000 or proposing to allocate $70,000 for connection incentives for new users for district heat, uh, because that is also supporting renewable energy. So that's uh, kind of the accounting of our uh, ARPA funds, both used and proposed. I'm not gonna go into this in detail. These are all available uh, online, but we did two surveys this year. One, a very complete uh, survey, the complete uh, citizen survey that was uh, a, uh, a professionally done, statistically significant survey, gave us a lot of in information. And then we also did a much more informal survey about the budget in advance. We may do another one uh, now that we've released the budget um, just to get a sense of, well, obviously the, the most important survey of all will be conducted on March 7th and, and then before, uh, but basically trying to get some sense. And again, I think unsurprisingly, the top issues that people identified in both surveys were you know, infrastructure, public safety, and housing. And so we've tried to allocate our resources in those areas. Um, and again, these are available. So the property tax rate, uh, as the budget stood coming into these hearings, um, we we did add. Uh, excuse me, me this. so at the council's direction, we added uh, eight thousand dollars for Wrightsville Beach and five thousand dollars for the Parks Commission. Uh, those have been put in. However, we were able to make some other adjustments to not change the tax proposed tax rate. Um, so we figured you'd appreciate that. And uh, so we are currently at a 9.3 or 7.4% increase, which is where it was when it was first proposed to the council. And um, obviously you will have two conversations with yourselves and the public to figure out where you wanna go from there. Uh, this is just a quick history looking at water and sewer rates. The, um, the long standing uh, policy of water and sewer rates, again, to address backlogged infrastructure, was to ra adjust rates by inflation plus 1%, additional 1% putting into, um, and possibly more, but at least the additional 1% going into fixing uh, old water lines and sewer lines. So the next steps and questions in the next steps in the process, we have public hearings tonight. Uh, another public hearing currently scheduled for Thursday, the 26th. Uh, that is the last night the council has to adopt anything they do that night has to be voted. And that's what goes on the budget. We will have an interactive spreadsheet on the website. And I think Kelly will have it up tonight so that uh, people can go in and add, subtract, multiply, and divide, uh, but add, add items, take items out and see what that effect has on the tax rate. So they can understand uh, what that means to remove something or to put something in. Uh, and so we hope people will take advantage of that and the, the council will take advantage of that. All budget documents are up on the website and uh, including these overviews. There, the, there was an overview article in the December bridge, uh, the, the second from December 21st bridge uh, with the summary of the budget proposal. There will be another one in the February bridge just in advance of the, of the budget vote along with um, along with the uh, annual report, which comes out. So a lot of chances to get yourself informed uh, voting, but certainly uh, in terms of the public process, it's, it's now and in two weeks. So that's all I have in the overview. I'm happy to answer any questions while I'm here. If you want to go back to slides, otherwise I'll go back to my seat and can answer questions. And we do have most, if not all of the key department heads here who can answer any specific questions. Oh, I forgot one last thing um, for the council and the public. We've had uh, each department did their own individual uh, budget presentation. It's all recorded. Uh, they are on YouTube and on the city, city's Facebook and I think our website. So anybody who wishes to see an individual department presentation, those are all available to the public as well. Um, and the council was able to view those um, so that uh, they could do that with more time instead of trying to cram it all into one or two meetings. So uh, that is another tool that's available for people who wish to get informed about the budget. Okay, thanks, Bill.
Any questions from the council at this point? Okay, thanks. At this point, we will open the first public hearing. And this is uh, our time to hear from uh, residents about uh, any questions you might have or any comments you might have about the uh, budget. And I will start by taking comments from people who are in the room. Anyone who wants to be heard, please just either please just step up and line up at the microphone. You can be recognized. Hey, Dan. Good evening, Dan Jones. Um, I am curious, uh, just looking at the uh, a few things. Like, first of all, is there a paper copy of this rather than the website that one could uh, read for going to sleep at night, um, if possible? Um, I, I I tend to be slow in my. Uh, I'm not enjoying uh, the uh, screen time any longer. But uh, I, I would think we can have one available. I don't know if there is one, but we can. Isn't one of the binders there, right There's on the, the table? Yeah. yeah, so we have some... I, I can live without that. I'm, I'm more, more looking about the infrastructure. Uh, in terms of the uh, 450000 for water and sewer maintenance, um, that is out of the city, not out of the water uh, and sewer fund. Is that uh, correct? That would so that was ARPA funds. Those are ARPA funds. Right. So that was above and beyond what we would normally do out of the water and sewer funds. Okay. As a point of curiosity, what has been sort of the average in the last couple of years for the total expenses uh, for the city for the repairs to water and sewer from uh, the various uh, main breaks, et cetera? Do we have an idea for that? Um, we probably do. Do you have any? Kurt, do you have a thought on that? I think there's only one functioning mic, so well, we can share it. Right? <laughs> is you think that one's working now? That one is this one. Okay. You think it is working now? I should give it a try. Yep. Okay. I'm Kurt Monica, public works director. So uh, the question um, about average annual cost for maintenance or repairs of the water system. So uh, it, it does fluctuate a lot depending on. Um, the, the season, uh, particularly the last years. So, yeah, I mean, last last year was a high one, and I'd say it was close to fifty thousand um, dollars. And on average, I would estimate around uh, twenty thousand is probably a, a rough estimate of average Before annual. No, no, fifty thousand was the contracted cost last year. Yeah, well, I, I, oh, so we don't fit, we don't figure our our own workers in on that. Oh, um, yeah, the, our own staff is you know I'd say average of twenty thousand a year. We typically do most of the repairs in house, um, and it's just last year there was a um, a high number of leaks, so we couldn't keep up. So we had to contract an additional fifty. And and how much have we done? So, so I don't know if that's exactly what Dan asked, but in addition to repairs, how much have we done in replace? You know, new replacement, because the four hundred and fifty is for new replacement of lines, not repairing. That's right. Yeah. So the four fifty bill reference for ARPA funding that was um, a replacement line on Town Hill Road. And um, and the school street project that we just completed. Okay, uh, I, I know it was two hundred thousand or something for the school street. Does this include anything of this uh, new connection that we're, we're I, I, I'm not quite sure what the cost is up to Murray Hill. <clears throat> uh, no, that was separate from the Murray Hill construction cost. Okay, because uh, there was no detailing on that, so I was curious what what we're what we're looking at is that as a uh, liability. Um. I'd have to look back to get the exact number on the Murray Hill connection. So the, the city, it was a shared expense with the Murray Hill Homeowners Association. The city's responsibility was to extend um, the municipal system from Town Street out to the end of North College. That was what the city installed. And then from there, um, the Murray Hill Homeowners Association was responsible for the cost um, through the field up to Cityside Drive, where their existing system was. 
Okay, I'm uh, just just trying to get a sense. So that's why I wanted a sort of a paper copy of the budget to sort of look at the uh, the abs absolute uh, things because I am uh, still curious. I uh, you know rather than the you know, and I, I guess I'm trying to ask this in terms of what percentage of the time is spent, uh, if you will, within public works on the repairs and stuff. Because I I keep seeing these things of you know work crews there for a few days when every time there's a main bus. So I'm sure that the you know twenty thousand is kind of like, like an awfully low number for that kind of uh, work. Am I am I missing something here? <laughs> Or we just don't account that way there. Uh, okay. uh, well, I mean, yeah, this, like I said, the number fluctuates a lot. I, I don't have the exact detail. I could certainly can get that and send it to you. We could pull it up from records. If um, you could, please. I'd appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Dan. Is there anybody else in the room who wants to address the council at this point? Yeah, Tina. <clears throat> Sorry, Tina Muncy again from Montpelier. I have a question. Could you clarify the Confluence Park money? Now, I appreciate it's not in this budget, right? It was what we voted for with the, it was in the part with the State Street uh, redoing. And what I'm curious about is my understanding is in order to do what we thought we'd have to do, it's going to cost twice as much or more than that. So, if we're not going to do it, you did say more flexible wording. What does that mean? Does that so, mean if you're not going to do something, it just goes into the general fund? So that's a great question. So I will try to make Thank it clear. You. Thank you. Um, so, right. So Confluence Park, so there were, it actually wasn't part of the East State Street bond, but there was a, a separate bond last year for $1.8 million that included Confluence Park. I think it included pellet stove at the at the um, D DPW garage, it included the very main intersection and the street lights, maybe one other project. It was a group of projects. So 600000 was tentatively uh, um, allocated for Confluence Park, which at the time was estimated to be about $1.1, $1.2 million total cost. So there were grant funds to cover the rest of it. So you're right. We've now heard that the cost of the project could be as high as $3 million. Uh, and I, I, you know, so the council hasn't seen the final presentation of the final numbers. So we're not in a position, well, I, they're not in a position to make a decision yet, but clearly the, the finances have changed. So there'll be an article in this year's, um, so we haven't issued the bond yet. We don't have the money in hand. So, um, so we, there'll be an article on the ballot this year to amend last year's bond amount. I mean, it won't change the dollar amount, but to change the potential uses to allow the council to either not issue the money at all, just save the 600000 or to reallocate it to some of these other infrastructure projects that we need. So uh, if, if they choose not to do the confluence park, that they could put it toward one of these other things. And it would still be limited to the items that are listed there. But, but you wouldn't give it back to the people. Well, you could. I mean, that would be a choice of the council. There would be one choice. So the, the, the people haven't spent it yet. So it has it, the bond hasn't been issued. So in theory, the council could only issue $1.2 million instead of $1.8 million, is what you're saying. And that's very much clearly a possibility. The so, reason I ask that is I think you've said we're about at our debt level. The bonding yep. is about yep. how far as we can go. Well, so I also want to clarify that because you're, you're correct, sort of. So we no, I mean you are. I mean for you know you're doing great. <laughs> we have a, we have a debt policy, a city our own imposed debt policy, and we are at that. The, our actual legal debt limit we're well below. So so it's just I want to make clear there's two different things. We're not we're not bumping up against any legal debt ceiling. It's our own limits that we put on us to, for good financial practice. So yes, we're bumping up against that and. That's one reason why there's no new bonds proposed this year because, um, you know, we've got to manage what we've got. We took we made some big steps last year and we've got to play those out for a bit. Um, so, yes. Sorry if I was garbled in my answers. Thanks, Tina. Is there anyone else in the room? And then we'll get to the people who are online. Okay. Um, first up online, we have Carolyn Ridpath. Hi, my name is Carolyn Midpath, and I'm a resident above Montpelier 
and a member of the Homelessness Task Force. I am here to ask the City Council to restore the funding for an embedded social worker in the police department. At the last Homelessness Task Force meeting, it was voted to ask the City Council to reinstate funding for this position, and I am here to advocate for that. First, I'll give a little history, then I'll describe the current funding package. Chief Bacos, I'm not sure I pronounced these names properly, uh, of the Montpelier Police Department and Chief Bombardier of the Barry City Police Department had talked about a shared position for a mental health clinician for many years. They needed to find funding and that was secured in both cities in late spring of 2020. The Department of Mental Health provided additional funds and Washington County Mental Health Services agreed to act as the employer. In August, 2020, Susan Lemire was hired and she stayed in the position until August, 2022, when she moved out of state. The intention was to have a trained social worker assist police in working with difficult situations. By all accounts, the collaboration between both police departments, Washington County Mental Health and the Department of Mental Health had been deemed a success. Currently, Washington County Mental Health Services is attempting to hire for the position of shared embedded social worker. The position is shared equally between Barry and Montpelier. The funding consists of 20,000 from Barry, 20,000 from Montpelier, and 40,000 from the Department of Mental Health. Currently, there is funding through June 30th, 2023. If no funding is available for fiscal year June 30th, 2024, then anybody hired in this fiscal year will need to be terminated as of June 30th, at least by Montpelier. Restoring funding at that point would be difficult. As a result, I am requesting that the $20,000 be restored to the budget for an embedded social worker. Thanks, Carolyn. I thought that history was very helpful. Chief, do you have anything you want to comment to that? <clears throat> I know you talked about this last time. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All very valid points, and I worked hand in hand with Susan for two years, so I would certainly welcome to have the twenty thousand dollars for Susan. This is not a or for for any embedded social worker. We have not been able to fill the position, so it was a it was a difficult spot for us to be in, and we had a lot of hard choices. And if I delivered everything that I asked for, Tina would be would be here hollering at me. So uh, <laughs> you know, so yeah. So, so I really I appreciate that, and I think you probably appreciate the difficult spot that we were all in too. So if, if you all want to give me the twenty thousand dollars, I will happily take it, and I will continue. I will continue to work to try to fill that spot. But as of this day, I still haven't been able to fill that spot. Thanks. Thank you. Um, next up online, we have Linda Berger. Hi, thank you. I have a really simple question. I can't, Bill, I can't find your um, slide presentation. Um, can you give me how to find it on the website? I'm really sorry. Uh, I'm not sure I can do that from sitting here at my desk, but we'll see if we can figure it out. Um, if not, we'll send it to you and make sure it's posted. Thank you. It'll be on tomorrow, right? Yeah, but should have been on from last time too. Thank you. If it's not, I'm sorry, we'll get it. Make sure it's up. Uh, next up, Dee Dee Brush. Uh, hi, thank you. I'm Dee Dee Brush. I live in Montpelier. And I do have a copy of the slide presentation that Bill, I did find it somehow <laughs> on the web. And I just have a few notes on here that, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to go from the, the first slide and move back. I, I don't have that many questions, but um, uh, one thing, and I mentioned this uh, the other day to Jack, um, under the heading of provide responsible engaged government, um, I would strongly urge the each member of the council to do more in terms of meeting with constituents in your, in your districts. Um, at e either at people's homes or at a um, uh, restaurant downtown, whatever, uh, or even in, in City Hall, to give people a chance to actually have 
get to know you for one thing. You get to know us a little better because I think either, you know, when you're sitting in the back of the room at a city council meeting, it's hardly a, a venue to um, know one another very well. And it's also very difficult to actually have a relaxed conversation. So I think that would be a huge uh, plus. Um, I also wanted to ask about the um, committee stipend program. Um, I, I remember last year when this was discussed, uh, there was a question, and maybe I posed it, I can't even remember, as to how you are going to measure its success. And I want to know what, what has happened with that. So that's one question. Do we, does someone have the data about use? We can get the data on use. There are a few people using it. Um, I don't think it's being fully utilized, but there are a handful of people for whom it's meeting a need. But we'll get you the data for the next meeting and before. So my question is, if it's only a few people, and I was it instituted last July? Is that when it started? Correct. So if there are only a few people, why is there another $20,000 in the budget for this coming year? I mean, that seems to be a poor choice of $20,000 if, if it's underutilized. So that's one thought. So, Dee Dee, I, I would say simply that um, from the staff perspective, at least, you know, sometimes programs take a while and, um, you know, they get slow start. So if the, the council had established a limit of, of $20,000 for the program, we felt it needed a full year to run before it could really be evaluated. If it started July 1st, and it was only, no, you know, we were doing the budget in November, December. It hadn't had a long time to run by the time we were proposing that. So, well, our, so maybe the 20000 that was last year, if that was the number, uh, maybe you don't need an additional twenty this year. I'm just saying that you must not have, you must that's not fair, have That's a fair argument. I just wanted to explain how we ended up with it. Okay. So I, I think you could at least look at that figure um, and, and just question whether you need to put the same amount back in this year. Um, on the practice good environmental stewardship page, um, there's something here that says rework bond language under the net zero DPW complex. W could you elaborate what you mean by rework the bond language? In what way sure. are you working it? Wow. I'm, I sure can. That actually uh, goes straight to the question that Tina Muncy just asked about reworking the bond language. One idea, um, which has not been approved or thought of by anyone, was if we did not use the $600,000 for the um, Confluence Park, we could use some portion of that to complete the whole, uh, convert the whole DPW to uh, oh. renewable energy. Okay. And we might not need the whole amount, and then we wouldn't have to come back for future funding, uh, and that would be completely done at once, because there's 250000 in there for that now, but that doesn't do the whole job. I see. I'm sorry. I forgot that that was part of the that, so, the that part was part of that no. bond issue. Right. Okay. Um, and then one thing, you know, there has been an awful lot of discussion over the years, and I think that you heard a little bit about it yet uh, again tonight about the idea of a public restroom. Perhaps can 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 the six hundred thousand be used for anything other than? Could it be used, for instance, if you wanted to build public restrooms? Could you allocate it for something different like that? Or does it have to be? Well, the, the, the language isn't um, final. Uh -huh. and it won't be final till the next meeting when we, so I'd have to look at what the current draft says, but it's possible yeah. that could be added. Uh, it's also possible that could be part of the 425,000 uh, that, that was been set aside in ARPA. And, uh, and as mentioned earlier, uh, we've also been working with the state. Uh, the, the comment was correct that the bill as it sits today uh, calls for study with possible construction uh, next year. Um, but they're also taking testimony on that bill tomorrow and I'm gonna urge them that they um, advance that project much quicker than uh, what is currently listed in the bill, whether that happens or not. So that's, you know, the. The reason we're asking the state just is that obviously a public restroom is for lots of people, including visitors to our capital city, as well as uh, those that are unhoused. And as we know, the, the capital, the state building is 
one of the most visited locations in all of Vermont. And so we have a lot of visitors that come to our city that need uh, public restrooms. And we think the state would be a great partner for that since they're a big draw. And they are also, you know, in the mix on the homeless issue as well, uh, how they handle it. So I'd like to see them be part of the solution. Okay, I just have a couple other points and then I'll, uh, I'll, move, I'll let you move on. Um, let's see, it is on, well, I think Tina brought it up. The whole notion, you, you would express great concern about how high the debt limit is. It's double what it was last year. Um, and I think you said that that jeopardizes possible projects that the city can do in the future. Um, is the council discussing this? Are you doing something about this? So, uh, um, I don't know the right way to ask. No, I, you know, I, I know, and I'm trying to think of a, the right way to answer your question that's clear for people. Um, so there's the debt limit, the overall debt limit, which is kind of the accumulation of all of our debt. Then we have a capital improvements plan. And again, trying to manage the budget, we try to set a target of how much money will go into that plan. And our ideal goal would be two and a half million dollars, 2.4 million, 2.5 million dollars. This year it's 2.15. When you have so part of that is debt payments, because that is those are capital improvement projects. So when you deduct the debt from the total, what's left is what you have to spend any given year. So you're right. So last year we we had a lot of projects. So we're projecting all of that debt to be fully funded this year. Some of it may not be. You know, as we mentioned, we haven't let the bond yet for 1.8 million. So so those debt payments may go down. It might free up some money for us this year. But we obviously plan for worst case scenario. But those are those are policy decisions, not legal restrictions. So the council could increase the, the debt policy. They could increase the amount of funding going to capital. One of the reasons it's hasn't been increased, at least in our presentation and, and when the capital, the council's subcommittee on capital improvements was because of the overall level of the budget. You know, it was sort of a, we're already at, you know, seven some odd percent. We don't really want to add $200,000 more to it. Now they may change their mind in the next two weeks, but that's where we were at in December. Okay. And then finally, oh, is Grout Road a city road, by the way? Yes. It is a city road. Okay. Um, and you may have answered this early, early on before I hopped on to Zoom. So forgive me if you've already, you don't have to answer the question if you've already done it, because I can listen to the recording. Um, on the street paving, uh, last year you requested, eight, it was requested for 875, and yet it's going to be 118,500. Why? Well, so a lot of it has to do with... The issue we just talked about was, you know, because some of the debt payments are eating into the available funds, but also we we supplemented a lot of our work last year and this year with ARPA. Uh -huh. so, um, there'll still be a lot of road work, including the $7.2 million on East State Street. The state is also fund uh, paving all of Route 2 from uh, the Creamy Stand to, uh, you know, the East Montpelier line to the Berlin line, excuse me, the wayside. Uh, that's be a huge paving improvement that doesn't come out of the city's budget, but it will still be a huge infrastructure improvement in our community. So um, we have a lot of paving work this year. We did over a million dollars worth of work. Uh, there will be other projects that will include paving in it. Um, we wish there was more money in there, honestly, but again, we're just trying to balance, but yes, that's a good question. And finally on the survey, you mentioned that the survey, you hired professionals to do the survey. Do you recall what the um, cost was for those surveys? So there were two surveys. One was the uh, the American Citizen Survey done by Polco. That was about eighteen thousand dollars, and there's we got a there's a long survey, a lot of demographic breakout. The a part of the subscription with Polco for doing the big survey is we then get a survey tool that we can use anytime we want, uh, and so we did a very short brief, uh, and that's you know part of that cost. So we can do regular surveying throughout the year. I think we're going to be doing some of that with the Country Club Road Project and others. So we put out a very short, uh, you know, yeah. few questions about the budget and we got 200 and some odd responses back on that. And um, most most of the responses were, as you pointed out, the, the four areas that people were most concerned with, but they all, almost everybody said they did not want taxes to increase. <laughs> Yet we have a 7.4 increase in the budget. 
taxes tax rate. Excuse me in the in the budget. <clears throat> Thanks, Dee Dee. I see you're above the two minute limit. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll done. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Dee Dee. <clears throat> um, next up, we have Dan Toll. You're not quite unmuted yet. Now you should be. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Um, once again, I, I want to first make it clear that tonight I'm wearing two hats. My mom you introduce wore... yourself. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, you think I'd know how to do this by now, Jack. Uh, I'm Dan Tall. I'm a resident of Montpelier. I live on First Avenue. And tonight, uh, I want again, I want to make it clear that I'm wearing uh, two hats. My residential, being a resident of Montpelier hat and the hat of being part of the Montpelier Police Review Kitty Committee and uh, not the consulting work I'm doing on homelessness. I I'm here to, rep to support um, Carolyn Ridpath's um, representation of the Homeless Task Force uh, recommendation around the issue that the so-called embedded social work issue. The first thing I wanted to mention as someone who does consulting in crisis response, that um, it's, it's, it's better to use the term embedded crisis worker because there's two, two major categories of crisis workers. One is social worker slash clinician and the other is peer support workers. And I'm happy to talk about that, but I don't have time in the two minutes. You'll have to allot me more time. Um, next, I just wanna mention, I won't reiterate my impassioned response, uh, my impassioned appeal that I made in December for the um, restoring this funding as being a potential life and death situation. Uh, however, I will uh, put on a third hat um, uh, as a former CFO in the private sector. Um, I would urge you not to take this out completely. I uh, would love to see it rest restored 100% at 20,000. But uh, as a former financial officer, I know once a line item goes to zero, it often stays at zero and never comes back. So if you have to reduce it, I, uh, I, I strongly recommend you reduce it, but not take it out completely. Um, this, the, uh, the other major point I wanted to make is, um, as I think many of you know by now, um, my proclivity is not throwing stones, but to try to throw ideas and solutions. Um, last time I offered to brainstorm with, uh, with Chief of Police uh, around the funding issue, and he and I have been working on connecting around that. But um, since that meeting, it seemed to me the threshold issue was, uh, and it came up again tonight, the recruitment issue. And just very quickly, I wanted to offer some ideas around recruitment as I've been thinking about this. Number one, uh, I sit on the Mental Health Integration Council, specifically on the Workforce Development Subgroup, chaired by Allison Kromp, who's the Deputy Director of DMH. With the uh, Council's permission, I'd be happy to reach out to Allison and explore ideas um, for recruitment for this position. Secondly, I'm co-chair of something called the Peer Workforce Development Initiative, which is specifically about developing the peer support workforce, including uh, peer support crisis workers. And again, with permission, I'd be happy to talk to th the committee uh, about the recruitment piece. Um, I did reach out to to Eric, the chief, um, he and I traded phone calls because I really wanted to chat with him beforehand about this, but um, that opportunity never arose. Um, and, oh, and the last thing, uh, the, the CIT initiative, um, Bill mentioned that earlier as being you know, one of the priorities in the budget. Uh, I am, I've been on that steering committee now for a year and a half. And one of the key components, or actually one of the, the core foundational elements of of CIT, which is crisis intervention training, is collaboration and, co and coordination among first responders all across Washington County. And an embedded crisis worker uh, would be one of the key players in that. Um, and so again, uh, that initiative, which we have um, the, the chiefs of police and fire and, and substance use and mental health from here, from here, Barry Berlin, we have a big committee of people that are working really hard and by, by withdrawing the funding, um, that would um, have a negative impact on that initiative. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. <clears throat> um, next, I see Carol Welch online. Uh, hi, I'm, uh, I live in Montpelier, uh, in obviously Montpelier on Valerie Avenue. 
Um, I, I got lost in the weeds of the budget workshops the other day online, and um, I noticed that there's um, most of the staffing is pretty um, stable, a number of, of positions. Um, but the city manager's office is, is gone up by two. And so I'm, first of all, would like to know what those two positions are. And then if there's an offset, are we increasing the number of staffing in an absolute sense or are people just being shuffled around? Anyway, that, that's just my question. Um, I could tell you the two positions. One was the uh, sustainability and uh, facilities position that was added to the budget last year. And the other was the reworking of the communications director from full time, part time to full time. Um, so those are both fully in the budget this year. Last year had been in portions. So um, they are fully new positions, but they were pre existing that hadn't been partially funded before. So that's when I looked at the um, the the organization chart. Those positions, or anyway, the um, the sustainability position is not shown, but that's like out of the city manager's um, budget or the city council's budget. It's it's in the city manager's budget, I believe. That's where that position is. I'm kind of looking at Kelly. <laughs> I know we. I know that that position got added fairly recently, and um, I was just wondering where it is falling on the organization chart and like who that person is reporting to. I think we're getting an answer for you now. Thank you. Just being sure you can hear me, okay? Uh, Kelly Murphy, Finance Director, Assistant City Manager. Um, so yes, you're correct on the organizational chart that sits in the City Manager's office and is funded with general fund dollars. And is that in the uh, city manager's office because that position is not tied to any individual uh, department, but provides right. sustainability services across the city government? Yes. And, and actually, um, if you're looking at the line items themselves, it's not actually in the city manager's budget per se. It's actually in um, city hall's budget and, lines. And it may be uh. on the DPW in the org charts. We've just corrected them and updated them, but it, for the one that went out in the budget, it might be on DPW. Yeah, I, I think it's it should be in any case in the city manager's office, but we'll verify. But those that would, to the extent there are two positions in the city manager's budget, that's what those are. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. You're welcome. Okay, Dee Dee, is your hand up again or just not taken down? Okay, thanks. And I do not see anyone else uh, online asking to be uh, recognized. Oh, I see Carrie Brown, Councillor Brown has uh, has joined us. Uh, because you're because you're online, you should uh, introduce yourself. Thank you. Yes, hi, I'm Carrie Brown, um, Councillor from District Three. Thank you. And uh, I want to make sure there's uh, to give it chance to anyone in the room who did not request to be recognized before and now would like to speak. Okay, with that, we will close. Oh, sorry, Dan. Yeah, we keep it brief. I noticed a passing rep, uh, Dan Jones again. I noticed a passing reference to the district heat plan. What is the plan there? I, I personally, I've been very disappointed the city's failed management of that. But I just want to put that editorially out there. But what is what is the current plans with the uh, district heat plant? And the second question I have, so I'll get, make it quick, and uh, is I was hearing that we seem to have within public works and other places a certain problem of staffing. Uh, uh, the uh, departments um, and uh, I was walking past the sign in uh, Burlington today about uh, somebody at the bagel bakery offering $25 an hour and that that may be some new benchmark in terms of what uh, pay has to be because of uh, inflation and the cost of living locally. So I was curious whether those are included in the budget. Are we just talking about what we have now or are there are we restaffing? What's what's going on there is my, my first question. Great. So I, I will answer both those questions. 
Uh, we're not doing anything with a district heat plant. What we've included was to, we want to, uh, we're proposing to use some ARPA funds to assist people with tying out. We have some interested new customers, which would help stabilize the system. Uh, and one of the, one of the obstacles has always been the cost of connection. So we're trying to figure out a way to uh, help all, including uh, the city users that are, are on the system now. So that's the district heat question. There's nothing happening with the plant. Um, I think, the second question is actually, I'm glad you asked it because it really is the core of the whole budget proposal, which is um, funding for staff. So we did reach historic vacancies over this past year and a half, and a lot of it had to do with wages um, and other. So we had to make some pretty drastic uh, changes over the course of the year to both DPW, police, the prior year with fire, uh, to make ourselves competitive um, with the private sector and with our fellow municipal. So we are now, I believe, almost fully staffed in DPW, but that is a recent phenomenon. We are getting close in police. We've still got a couple of vacancies left, but we were down five or six. So we're making progress, although some of them still need to go to the academy and will be sort of not able to be fully functional for us for six to eight months. Um, but so part of the 7% in the budget is just filling those positions and filling them at higher rates, trying to, to um, provide the services that we need because uh, our old rates weren't cutting it. So yes, you know, that was a very uh, a astute question because it's, it's the, no, I, I mean, let's face it, we're a people oriented business. I mean, yes, we pave roads. Yes, we you know do a lot of things, but you people hear me say this year and you're out. You know, it's people that take your dispatch call. It's people that answer your fire call. It's people that plow your roads. It's people that do the work and people that assist here in City Hall and they cost money. And when we can't, without people, we can't do what we do for the taxpayer. And we were, we had to reverse that trend. So yes, that's a, a big impact. So thank you for asking that. Okay, I, I just uh, ending uh, along with the sort of the budget think, is there a way of getting a little more detail on what's planned on the district heat system for me? Uh, sure. I mean, I, 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 I being on the energy committee, we're, we've been sort of talking about that. Oh, so. yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know that there's a any more plan than what I just told you at this point, but maybe, maybe we're, maybe we should talk separately. But yes, we're happy to provide whatever we can. Thanks, Dan. <clears throat> Anybody else who would like to uh, address the council at this point, recognizing that we have another public hearing coming up in two weeks? Okay. Jack? I see nobody online. Jack? Oh, oh, sorry, Dan. I wasn't yeah. sure. I had have, I, I have my hand up, but maybe you couldn't see it. I apologize. I wasn't sure if it was a new hand raised. Oh, that, yeah, it is a new hand. Well, it's the same hand, but I put it up twice. <laughs> Well, and will you try not to recognize people twice? I just did that with Dan, so try to be brief. Oh, totally different topic. Um, it's on the issue of housing and homeless, homelessness, and I hope this is inappropriate, but I just wanted to let everybody know that next Thursday at noon for Homeless Awareness Day, there's going to be a, an event on City Hall steps, or excuse me, the State House, State House steps at noon. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. If you could email me that, uh, I'd appreciate it. We were talking about it at, uh, at work today, and it'd be good to be able to publicize that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Hearing no other uh, people who are seeking to be recognized, I will close the public hearing. And uh, so, Council, where are we? We have the opportunity to go forward as we are or uh, take any suggestions to either add or subtract from the, uh, from the budget that we uh, sent up uh, last time. Lauren. Thanks. Um, I mean, I think to me, the one outstanding issue on my mind is the embedded social worker. If there is a way to get funding, I think even to Dan's point of getting it in here in an amount that keeps it as a clear priority of the city while acknowledging that the challenges we've had hiring it and, um, you know, trying to work to make it happen. I mean, 
as Dan mentioned, it was again, a huge priority of the police review committee. And I, by all accounts, it seemed really successful. So it seems unfortunate to just let it go and to, I could see it becoming harder to bring back in the future when hiring might become easier if it's kind of abandoned altogether this year. So um, I'd be curious what other people's thoughts are. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I agree. Um, as somebody who does work with the Community Justice Center, I am working with people that probably could have used a person like that in their life before they committed crimes or whatnot. Um, I feel like we should probably revisit that. I would, I would really hate to see that slip. It's it, yeah. Yep, I, I I get that. Uh, what does that make our percentage? Seven point five five. Well, so you have your, you know, the council has options. You can increase the budget by twenty thousand. You can cut something else. You can, you can direct us to come back with a recommendation at the next, you know, we have some choices, um, but I think you, we'd really like to, you know, I think you need to give us some direction here. I don't know what the, no what was that? 7.6. Okay. I said five, five. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a support motion. Put it back in. So you're not making the motion, but you were <laughs> saying <laughs> the I like to make real motions. I don't yeah. care. Are you going to make that motion? Sure. I would move that we add back in 20000 for a embedded social worker at the police department. I'll second it. Okay. So is there a discussion? Okay. Uh, Bill, Bill, one thing that I'm... Uh, wondering is I, I got Dan's point about even not having a zero line would be uh, anything above zero would enable us to refund the, the, the position if, uh, if the money became available. Does that literally mean that if we funded it at $1 that we could put the money, you know, in an organization this size with is that something that would make a difference? Or so I, I think um, I, I don't want to speak for Dan, but the way I understood his his comment, which I I get, is it's not so much what happens now. It's that when you, once you zero something out, the next year when you're doing your budget, it's already at zero. So it's like okay, well, you know, and next thing you know, it just never comes back. It's status that's quo, cool. right? And so I think his argument was even if you put you know five thousand dollars in, at least there's a budget line that you'll review next year. I think to answer your question, so that's a different question than, um, you know, right? We could try to make an you know an adjustment. Um, I, I you know, and I want to reiterate what Chief Nordenson said when we when we did our budget deliberation, there wasn't a person in the room that didn't want a social worker. And I think, you know, uh, had we had, you know, in all fairness, had we had someone in that position, we probably would have funded it and had to figure someplace else to take it. It was just, you know, you're making tough choices, trying to stay within an already high limit. And uh, it seemed like one area because not only because it was vacant, because it had been vacant for so long, uh, it seemed like it was almost impossible. So that's when we made the decision. I don't think we would object to the funding. And if you'd like us to Take a look. Uh, we can. Uh, I don't have an answer right off the top of my head where we get it, but um, we might be able to do something. Donna. Well, and along those lines, when we have money left from the prior year, it doesn't necessarily stay there. I mean, but could we attempt to keep the money we have left over in case we need more than 20? Well, so... <laughs> So this particular program is funded, as um, was mentioned accurately, 20000 from us, 20000 from Barry, and 40000 from the state through Washington County Mental Health. So our contribution is pretty well set. Um, you know, what happens with general fund money at the end of the year is, you know, yeah. drops to the fund balance. Yeah. Um, so, but then you could appropriate money out of the fund balance Okay. to spend if, if that's what you chose to do i don't i think you know using the fund balance as a revenue when you're setting your budget you know you're using one-time money to 
yep. for an operating expense, it's not good practice. Uh, I think it'd be better if it's something we really want to do and it's a priority, we should put it in the budget and figure out how we're going to fund it. And, you know, there's not a huge plethora of choices. We either add or cut somewhere else. So, I, you know, those are, that's what we need to do. Oh, let's see, I carry, oh, carry. okay, good. I was looking for your hand. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, so my question is about, Bill, you said that 20,000 comes from us, 20 from Barry and 40 from the state. And do we have any idea what's what the status of those sources of funding are? And so if we don't put in our 20,000, is it gonna, is it gonna have any impact on that? If we do, can we, and we can find someone, can we count on the funding from Barry and from the state? I am um, see Chief Nordenson heading to a microphone. Thank you. I, my understanding is uh, my understanding is that that money has been appropriated again through the legislature and they put forth that bill. So <laughs> you know the Barry, funding should be there. Do you know whether Barry has it in their budget? Barry has it in their budget. Yeah. So we, we've been trying to find other ways to make it go of it. This would certainly make my life a lot easier. Please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we He's the new guy? Are we are we ready to vote on this uh, motion? All right. If so, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, there you go. Anything else on the uh, on the budget? Anything else you want to either add or to cut or instruct the manager? Okay, then we are set. And so that now, do you need a motion to? Have that be our budget, or you just wait until the next? No, you, you've adopted a budget. Now you just voted to amend it, uh, and then that would be the budget going to the next hearing. And again, it's not nothing's final until you vote what you put on the ballot. So uh, obviously, you can change this or anything else at the next hearing. And uh, you know, we'll take a look, and if we have any ideas, we will certainly bring them in. We understand the challenge as well, and the, where we're at. So, okay, thanks. Now. Um, I'm a little, a little confused because I think there may be a mismatch between what the uh, printed agenda says and what the online agenda says. I think we're up next uh, for the warning for the for the first public hearing for the warning. Is that annual meeting? That's right. Yeah. Okay, great. So item eight, first a public hearing warning. Um, so obviously this is the first public hearing on what would be on the ballot. Um, and let me have this here. I'm not gonna read it word for word, but I will summarize the warning. And then there are, you know, I think there are a couple of key issues that sh we should talk about. Um, I mean, so uh, the, first, the first article one, you're going to be doing it is, is to the one-year term for the mayor, uh, then the council district election, school district moderator, school district, you know, the, so basically the first bunch of the elections. Then Article 6, well, the Article 5 is the withdrawal from the public safety authority. Article 6 uh, would be the our budget. Article 7 would be the school budget. Article 8 would be the school's capital reserve fund. Article 9 would be the mayor's pay. Article 10 would be the council member's pay. Article 11 is the school board pay. So these are all the annual budgets. Uh, and then Article 12 would be the, uh, the allowing the school board directors to use the fund balance uh, again. So then Article 13 is one I think we should talk about. This would be, um, shall the, the voters uh, amend the authorization provided to the city council on March 1, 2022 to borrow the sum of money not to exceed 1.815 for highway recreation park and building infrastructure improvements. 
And then it would go on to say, proceeds from bond funding may be used to finance the following amended improvements of various city infrastructure, heating system and energy improvement projects at the public works garage, street light, traffic light and intersection improvements, a retaining wall on Marvin Street, Confluence River Park and other highway infrastructure projects. The estimated cost of the improvements is 1.8150. So it just provides a little bit more flexibility, but it does still limit us to those. Um, those topics. Now we don't have to decide now how we would reallocate that, but that that would be that's the draft we have from our attorney. But it's also was intended to basically keep it within the the family of items from last mm -hmm. year. Um, but just specifically thinking that if we didn't want to proceed with Confluence Park, and we don't know that yet, but if we didn't, then we would have the opportunity to look at that money. And is the change? The uh, use of the word may. Yes. And and also just, for example, it specifically called for a pellet boiler at Public Works. And here it talked about heating system and energy improvement projects because we think we will still do a pellet. But again, we haven't made a formal recommendation yet. But if this were to pass, I think we might suggest looking at just getting that Public Works project done. With, you know, all the things that Chris talked about, the floor heating and using the methane and really doing it right and, and, and having that completely onto renewable and using some of the 600. So this just gives us that flexibility there. But otherwise, it's the same projects that will be in last year. Okay. At this point, I will uh, open the public hearing on this. Oh, excuse me. Let me just finish. The, oh, sorry. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Article 14 right now is just a placeholder. We have not yet made a decision about whether to proceed with the local option sales tax. It's actually the next item on the agenda. And then Article 15 is the annual special assessment uh, for the designated downtown uh, funds. And then uh, the, the Kellogg Hubbard Library and the Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice that you've already voted to put on the ballot. So that's it, the 17 articles. Okay. Now I will open the public hearing on the uh, on the warning for the annual meeting. Is there anyone up? Uh, Linda Berger. Hi, thanks. Um, I had a question on the 2022 Article 13. There was a lot of, uh, at the end, there was a lot of information about the issuing of the term of 20 years is, is estimated to be approximately, so there's several sentences or one long sentence, which is not included in the current um, proposed Article 13. So I'm wondering why all of that language from the previous bond was dropped. Because, so great, great questions to the You've got an informed group of residents. I appreciate that. Um, so the reason for that is that the bond was approved and authorized. So the voters have already authorized us to spend this money as per those terms. So what we're at, so if this Article 13 as drafted were to be defeated, last year's article still is in effect. So this isn't revoting the bond; it's simply amending the allowed uses. So that's why. Great catch. And is that it for you, Linda? Yes, thank you very much. I, I'm not trying to cut you off if you have more, but okay. Um, I don't see anyone else online looking to comment or raise questions. Is there anyone in the room who would like to uh, comment or raise questions on this item? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Um, Council, uh, where are we on this? Lauren. One question for Bill. So we recently adopted a policy that made clear that any facilities improvements we're doing will be net zero or consistent with our net zero plan. Like my only question would be like, I would, I'd be inclined to say something like heating system and energy improvement projects at the public works garage consistent with our net zero plan or something like that. But I think we just adopted something saying that all building um, projects will be. So I don't think we need to. I just want to be clear that mm -hmm. that's the case because I just wouldn't want us to be like locking in something. Right. We realize, oh, that actually would be a lot cheaper to yeah, put no, in think, an oil so, boiler. So that's fair. I, I think you could, we could put, probably put uh, uh, something where it says heating system energy improvement uh, projects. We could either say net zero or renewable energy, something like that. You know, 
uh, I think that would be perfectly fine. Um, and just good point, the, the policy that was passed was that all buildings will be net 30 by net zero by 2030. So this would, the biggest one to do is the whole public works facility. So if we can have an opportunity to get that all done you know, a long ways away, you know, this, you know, we have three buildings here on district heat already. The senior center is used as a pellet boiler. We'll be building a new rec facility. I don't think we're going to probably redo the energy system for, for the old rec building unless it gets, you know, and that's a whole different story. So we'll, we'll have come a long way if we can toward that goal um, because obviously we already do the, the um, solar re whatever you call it, the exchange, solar exchange. So we're, we would be pretty far along. Any other comments on this? Would you got folks like to see draft language for the next meeting that says renewable or something like that? Sustainable or net zero? It sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have to approve this tonight. We can approve it as next long time. as you're okay. You know, basically, you're closing the first hearing and suggesting any changes you'd like to see. And then yep. the next meeting, it'll, you will have to pass the final. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Next up, we're on to uh, item nine, uh, consideration of uh, proposed charter change. Uh, Bill, I think yep. it's up to you again. Sure. And is this uh, gonna, a public hearing too? This is or? not a public hearing, although right. certainly um, our practice is to take public comment. Um, in order to change the charter for anything, the city council has to vote to file language with the city clerk, the proposed amendment. And that has to be done 10 days prior to the public hearing. So the idea is if, if you vote, just doing this doesn't mean you're even agreeing to put it on the ballot. But if you don't do this, then this issue is over for this year. But if you vote to file the language, then at our next meeting, which is after 10 days, we would hold the public hearing and then you would decide whether or not to proceed putting it on the ballot. Uh, so this is a required step in, in the process. And then there has to be one public hearing, um, you know, 30 days, at least 30 days prior to the vote, and then another one within 10 days. Of, so we would have another one at the end of you know, February. And so this, if we vote to file this language, then it would be on for public hearing at our meeting on the 26th. Correct. Okay. And this again is the proposal to add a local option sales tax. That's right. We currently have rooms, meals, and alcohol, and this would include sales, uh, which I think 19 other communities have done in Vermont. Uh, and I think as so, as I would throw this out, that as you're having this conversation, uh, some of the feedback we've received, um, and, and we haven't, we staff haven't really taken any kind of advocacy role or anything with this because we didn't, you know, till, till we know what the council wants to do, um, it is what, uh, what would we use this for? So I don't know if you have to, you know, but so maybe we would say, you know, 50% of it or some percent of it would go to road paving or some percentage of it would go to housing, you know, those kinds of things, or even maybe some small percent provides regular steady funding for Montpelier Live, you know, help support businesses who would feel like they'd be being real. So, you know, something like that, if, you know, I think that would, if our goal is have 900,000 or a million dollars a year in paving and we set 50 or 60% of this that has to go to that, then we know we'll have that, you know, it'll be based on that. I'm not, you know, and we'd be happy to come back with some specific recommendations if you'd like, or it's just a general revenue that could be used to offset our budget. Um, you know, in theory, it could reduce property taxes or, you know, it could do everything from reducing property taxes by one and a half million dollars to adding one and a half million dollars of goods and services that can otherwise not be afforded uh -huh. to pay. So it's how you choose to allocate that. But um, it may be that people, you know, uh, again, I'd leave that to you, the elected folks, but uh, some people like to know, what do you plan to do with it? So maybe by, if you choose to go ahead tonight and we have a public hearing, you will collectively make what I think about. Uh -huh. Council, sorry, uh, 
if we designate it at this point and it continues and it goes on the ballot de designated specifically, then we have to go back to another charter change to undesignate it? Uh, it depends how you, yeah, it depends what you put in the charter versus what you, you know, if you make a commitment. The, the, uh, okay. So it can be separate. You could not put it in the charter, right, but you, you could you make could a simply pass a council resolution that says this is what the use would be. And um, and for example, I'm just making this up, but um, say you chose to put a bunch of money into paving and you really want that to go on, you know, because we need that. But then let's say we wanted to put another giant chunk of it into this country club road project. For, and you might say, you know, that will be revisited after four years or five years. You, you know, we're not going to do that perpetually, but that would be a, you know, way to raise $500,000 a year for that project, uh, putting it on the property. So, you know, just one example of something you can do and set how long that policy is for. And again, of course, any council could change that too, but um, state's intention. Just like when we did with the other sales tax room and board. Um, I'd rather keep it separate uh, so the charter change is the actual option tax. And then within us, we may decide a policy of how to spend it and promote it as far as the item on the ballot. But I'd, I prefer to keep them separate. Yeah. No, you don't have to put it in. That's... So, so in do we... general, what are your thoughts about, about going forward uh, at all about whether we should do this? We will discuss and vote. Yes. Closer. Yeah. Is it better now? Okay. Yeah. I'm laughing. So we will uh, talk and discuss now and vote to take it to the public vote on the election, right? Okay. So, so tonight so, you'd be voting to, a, to file language with the city clerk. If you do that, then at the next meeting, we would have a public hearing. We'd hear from the public. And then you would decide whether or not to put it on the ballot for the voters to vote. So this is a procedural step tonight. But obviously, if you don't want to go ahead and spend any more time on it, you can end it now. Um, if you chose. Thank you. Carrie. Thank you. Um, I think I said this the last time we discussed it. I'm not in favor of sales taxes in general because they're extremely regressive and they are felt most profoundly by the people who can least afford them. And so I'm not in favor of advancing this. Uh, so that's where I am right now. Okay. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who has an opinion? What, one of the, th my feeling is that I, I agree with everything you said last week and tonight about uh, sales taxes, but it's also one of the few places, opportunities to look for expanding our revenue base with uh, without raising property taxes. And that's something that uh, you know, we regularly hear people with concerns about their property taxes. And as I said last time, also, this is a way to generate some revenue from people who don't live in the city of Montpelier. Uh, well, I I would like to at least put it forward so that it's on our discussion for the 26th. So I'll make a motion that we advance it onto the ballot for discussion, further discussion so at a public you, hearing. The motion would meeting. be to file the language with the city clerk. Okay. I couldn't get it to come up on my iPad. Sorry. I would have read your memo uh, word for word. So I move that we put the... Refile this. Refile. File. This language with the city clerk. I second. Any further discussion? Donna, or sorry, Lauren. Yeah, I, I'm kind of torn on this one. I mean, I'm going to vote to advance it because I think having the conversation and I'd be really interested in hearing from the community on it. I totally agree with Carrie that this is not my preferred way of taxing. I don't like the regressive nature of it. And, you know, we do have increasing needs and limited ways to raise revenue. Um, I was looking up, because um, I know it came up last time, on what's exempt from the sales tax. So I just pulled up from the Vermont um, 
government website and like clothing is exempt, food, food products and beverages. Um, so not like prepared food at a restaurant because that's already subject to the um, local options tax. Um, but like your grocery shopping, the only thing that's taxable is soft drinks. Um, but but like accessories, um, clothing accessories and some hygiene products and stuff are um, subject to the sales tax. Um, medical equipment is not menstrual care products are not over the drug over the counter drugs are not um but like sports equipment and uh other supplies like hot tubs and body massage appliances are taxable so um <laughs> quite a very specific list it's very interesting how all these decisions must have been made <laughs> through the years what was and was not um I, it does give me some comfort that like the essentials in many cases are not subject to it some are like I think the hygiene products are essential. Um, so it's not across the board, but, um, you know, people buying food and um, drinks and clothes that would not fall under this. So um, that does give me some comfort. So again, I'll vote to advance it and really interested in the community response and discussion next week and kind of going into that open-minded. Jen, is that where you are with that? <laughs> looking that up because that's exactly what I was wondering, like what is going to be taxed. So thank you. Um, Carrie, do you have a response to that or should we, let's, I'd like to hear what uh, people either in the room or online have to say about it. If there are any comments. Yeah, Tom. Thank you. Uh, Thomas Moore, Prospect Street, Montpelier. Uh, isn't uh, another 1% sales tax? No. I'm just wondering right now, we already have a 1% uh, sales tax. We've had it for a few years, right? No, we have 1% rooms, meals, and alcohol tax. Right. We do not have a sales tax, well, local sales. This tax we're talking about is 1% right. more we want to do, right? Or looking to do? It's a different stuff. Right, it's different do. tax. It's, it's on different items, Tom. It's the same level. It's 1%, but it's on different items. Oh, a different item. This is I general sales tax. Increase. No, not from, well, say, no, not from the okay. one we already have. Okay, because I was going to say, you know, the, the cost of everything that's gone up, you already got yourself a little bonus. That $10 pizza now is $16. So you're getting uh, 1% extra on that six bucks times 300 pizzas. So I don't know, steak. Sorry. <laughs> that was a great question, though. Yeah. No, it is a good question. And, yeah. That was a good clarifying question. Thank you. Yeah, cars. Cars are not. Um, cars are not part of this. Uh, it, no. Uh, but just for to clarify for folks that are watching. Um, the city does have a rooms, meals, and alcohol tax. So folks that stay in lodging pay a local one percent. Supposed to eat out at a restaurant or have you know food at prepared food pay a one percent, an additional one percent on top of the state's tax. And the same thing with alcohol served in a an establishment, not what you buy at the store. Uh, so that that the city already has that. It I think makes about two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year from that. Um, this is. You know, drastically different. This is local sales. This would probably be about 1.5 million per year in revenue. Um, interestingly, uh, it's the only way. Not that this would be this, the reason to do it, but it's the only way that local governments can get any revenue from cannabis sales. The state took all the revenue for themselves, but they are subject to the local sales tax. So that would be it. And also now this includes, I think, Amazon sales and things like that, which in prior years had not when we looked at this before. Um, the simplest way to answer the question though, for people that are concerned about this, we have a lot of questions on, does this include, does this include? And it only includes what is already subject to the state sales tax. The city doesn't have the authority to tax new items or different items. We're not the people, you know, we had, a, I got some feedback about why, why doesn't this include professional services and those kinds of things. It's like the state has opted not to tax those. So the state tax department collects this for us. The city can't make its program up to be anything different than what the state sales tax is now. So if you're paying sales tax, which is currently 6% on any item, you'd be paying 7% with one of it coming to the 
Uh, Carrie. Uh, Bill actually just answered the question I was going to ask. So I'm set. Thanks. Okay. Any further discussion on uh, on the motion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? No. So we uh, I think that means we have to have a roll call. Um, Brown or Hurl? Uh, Morton? Cohn? Aye. Bate? Aye. Brown? No. Okay. <clears throat> so the motion's passed, and we will be filing that with the uh, city clerk's office. <clears throat> Thank you. The next item is the uh, special election for mayor. Um, so on this item, uh, as we discussed when we were choosing to appoint Councilmember Cohn, uh, the the charter is very specific. It calls for an appointment of a of a vacant position, but a special election for the mayor. Um, and and does not have a, an appointment option. Uh, so the city council decided informally that you would call the special election for the town meeting day. Uh, but again, we couldn't do this until there was actually a vacancy in the position and Mayor Watson re resigned at the end of the last meeting. So this would be your formally uh, calling your special election. It's a simple act to say that. and. And, and Bill, I had one question about this, and it's either related to this or related to the uh, to the warning. And that was that uh, the the draft warning that we that you presented had uh, Article One as to elect a mayor for a term of one year to complete the unexpired term. And I was wondering if that should be part of the warning for the city meeting or whether it should be a separate warning because it has us call. Uh, so we we ran that through the city clerk. He believed that, um, you know, we, we don't want to run two ballots and all that kind of thing. Um, so if there if there's an adjustment to that wording, it will be on the warning. But uh, his opinion was that it could still run as long as you've called it for a ballot item. And the example was uh, in the years past, we've done special ballot items uh, on other elections. Simply added that. Okay, thanks. Anything from the council? So, if I use the wording here on the uh, format, Bill, it's going to be correct that we direct the city clerk to call a special meeting for the mayor on March 7th, 2023, in conjunction with the annual city meeting, including the same balloting and polling and balloting schedule. Be correct. Did you just move that? Yep, that's my motion. Okay. And Councilor Hurl seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We've adopted that. Um, yeah. Um, so now we're to. I don't know how long that's going to be. Um, would you like to take our break now rather than waiting for eight there? Okay, we'll take a 10 minute break and then we'll return for other business council reports, a variety of things, and then a potential uh, executive session. Hey folks, we are uh, gonna, uh, I'm gonna call the meeting to order again. We will, Right now, skip item 11, the proposal for housing and conservation project on Gould Hill Road. And we'll move on to item 12, other business. Have any other business? Okay. Um, item 13, city council reports. Earl. Um, I am officially announcing that I will not be running for re-election um, in March. I have decided to um, take a step back to focus on my family right now. Sorry, this is a little emotional because it was such an honor um, 
to be voted into this position and uh, to spend the time with all of you and learning how city politics work, how the city runs. Um, it's really been a gift, uh, but my family really needs my full attention. So I am stepping down once my term is over and I look forward to seeing what y'all do in the next year. So thank you. Go on. Uh, I have two things. Okay. Am I good? Maybe. Probably need to be right on top of it and louder. More? Okay. <laughs> Something said me. So I kept hearing um, this issue about crosswalks and their colors. And I've noticed that because of the, I think, snow and the salt, everything, they are really fading away. So I just want to bring this up if a uh, city has any plan to repaint them or is there any specific season to it because it's getting darker uh, so early it's really difficult for drivers to see uh, the crosswalks uh, and the second thing is uh, I um, I'm serving on SAJAC uh, but now I'm on the city council and I um, know that Jennifer and Lauren uh, are already on that committee so I just want to ask city council opinion uh what would you like to me do just be there or until election just observe other any other community meetings so thank you my opinion is that you're you're duly appointed you're on the committee um at the after the election we go through a process of appointing people to committees so just stay there Thank you. Uh, I actually have nothing within um, the role of city council person, but I do want to celebrate that my oldest son has bought a property back in Vermont. It's not in Montpelier, unfortunately. It's down in Stafford. Uh, but I've been spending a lot of time down there because it's an empty house, checking it out after all these storms. But uh, he did get the um, welcome to Vermont stipend. Uh, it was wonderful. I mean, it's gonna, he's moving from Texas, so it's a, it's a huge help. He does work remotely. His wife will work remote. They're both in a house that definitely needs remote work. Uh, and they have wonderful optic fiber. So Vermonters, optic fiber is available in the most amazing places. So we made a great progress on that, really. It's uh, wonderful to know. Anyway. Great. Uh, Carrie? Yeah, I just want to express my gratitude and appreciation uh, to my my district three council member mate, Jennifer. And I'm very sorry that we'll be losing you. And I've been really enjoyed serving alongside you. And it's going to be quite a loss to us. Um, I know you will still be around and you'll still be connected in some way, which is great. But I just wanted to thank you for, for being here all this time. and. and being able to work together. And I have two, two things to say. One is that uh, the uh, city Vermont Montpelier housing committee met uh, last night and we have been, had been talking over the last couple of meetings about coming to the council with a proposal for a charter change to uh, put uh, a just cause eviction proposal on the ballot. And after working very hard and having a couple of very productive meetings, we decided that we're just not not there yet. Uh, there, were, it's a complicated issue. There are people uh, looking at it with a whole bunch of different perspectives. But that's why you didn't hear anything from us tonight about uh, a proposal for just cause eviction. But we, part of our vote was that we are going to keep working on it and. Uh, not that's who's to say we might be coming back again next year with a, with a proposal for that. But uh, the committee was appointed and got rolling kind of late. And so that's where we are with that. Um, the other thing I, I share with uh, Councilor Brown, Jen, I'm really sorry to see you go. It's been great working with you sitting next to you and the sharing the contact and all those these meetings. I really valued what you brought to the council and you will be missed. Um, city clerk's report. Uh, uh, 
Sarah, and I have no report. I'm just filling in for John tonight. Just very happy to spend this time with you. Thank you. City Manager's report. Um, sure, a couple things. One, um, to respond to the immediate question. So crosswalks are a problem in the winter. Uh, the salt and things from paving really does fade them. We try to do them as soon as in uh, the spring as we can. Um, the, it has to have a certain temperature for the heat for the paint to stick. So it has to be, I think it's about 40 degrees overnight. So until it gets warm enough consistently to do that throughout the city. So usually May or so we start painting crosswalks. Uh, and sometimes we'll do it again in the fall if they've started to fade before the winter, but they almost never survive the winter. So it's a constant, it's an annual problem. And then, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, Bill. Can I ask another question about the crosswalks? As we were talking in, in the in the budget uh, materials, and one of the things we were talking about was street lighting. Is there a way to set up the street lights so that they align, or there's special lighting going down onto the uh, crosswalks? Um, yes, and I would probably want to get some more expertise to respond to that. Um, I believe when we redid the ornamental lights, not the high overhead lights, several years ago, we did, they are set up to do that, but mm -hmm. the level of those lights isn't so high that it doesn't really throw as much as you'd like. And that was the council at the time wanted to keep them lower. Um, so we can deal with that. Uh, we'll get some more expertise. I scare myself about the people that I almost hit because yeah. I don't see him. And, um, and then, yeah, so the other thing I have, and this is a logistical issue, and I apologize for this, but um, somehow or other, the group that works on the annual welcome legislators reception, which we have not had for a couple of years. So the good news is that we're excited to have it coming back all great it's all being organized it's been organized for thursday january 26th <laughs> so um and it's five to seven so we we could we could start at seven we could have two weeks to publicize we could move the 26th meeting back to the 25th and just go to the reception in case, unless there's petitions that come in on the 26th that we need to deal with, or we just keep it at 630 and we all have to leave at six. And, you know, I'm, unfortunately part of the whole point of it is for us to interact with legislators. So, uh, but I just learned this today and uh, thought I would bring it to your immediate attention. Thank you. Lauren, what do you want to do? How often do petitions come in on that last day? I mean, not that it's really, indicative of really, if ever. I mean, I shouldn't say no. I shouldn't say if ever. We do occasionally about. It's been years since we've been like, we could find out. You may not know. You don't know. The, John usually knows. The clerk usually knows if someone's circulating one. You know, we usually know because we see people out about it. We've heard read something on social media that I haven't heard of any you know, petitions being circulated this year, other than election petitions. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. it might be a good bet. You carry? Yeah, I I just saw that too, and I was so excited to see that it was back, and then realized, oh, we're not actually going to be able to be there for much of it. Um, it does feel it. I feel like there's a great benefit to us being able to be at that event and for the whole thing, and so. Um, if we could move our meeting a little bit, I think that would be great. And so, and maybe the thing to do is to just start a little bit later. I know it makes a very long day, but um, I, I think I'd be a little nervous about doing it the day before if we're worried about any petitions that came in on the 26th. And I guess that would be my question is what would, what would we do then if we didn't have that meeting scheduled for that night? We would, so, so the, uh, that's a great question. I think the, and, and, um, you may be able to get this answer quicker than than I can, uh, but I think the answer is that you know we don't have a lot of leeway really in what to you know it's it's a procedural vote to vote to add it to the ballot, so we could have very quick five you know 
could even be an online meeting. We could have a, you know, we could meet here at five and then go to Chapel. You know, I, I think there's, or have just that meeting. Uh, we could warn the meeting for Capitol Plaza, do it there. You know, I mean, I, I think it would really be a perfunctory and then we'd have to vote to finalize. The, the thing you wouldn't be able to do is, I think, is if we knew a petition was coming, you'd have to amend the final ballot from the night before. But, I, you know, again, I think we could find out if, if the clerk knows whether or not there's something circulating. I certainly haven't heard of any. So, Bill, if we put our meeting back on Wednesday the 25th, but we also advertised however long we had to ahead of time for one on the 26th, like noon remote? Well, the problem is the deadline for submitting petitions is end of business. Oh, okay. So it would have to be at least you know, four thirty or five. All right. But can we advertise we for that yep, ahead? Absolutely. Okay. And then if, 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 that, if we don't need it, open and close it. Yeah. I think the issue is more just the logistics of doing it. And, and, you know, to be fair, we have publicized that our meeting is on Thursday, the 26th, but we could do a quick, you know, we've got a two week blitz of changing the night if we had to. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Delcor. Yeah, I may have missed her, but I thought you said that the uh, hearing for the local option tax charter change was the 26th. Right, well, that would have to be changed. Okay. All right. That hasn't been warned yet. So, um, yeah, and the same thing with the public hearings on the budget, all that would have to move. But um, that's, we can do that. We have time to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, I do we have to move this or just direct you? I think we should. I think consider, if we're going to make a change, a formal change, either in the date or starting time or something of the meetings, it would be good to have a formal action council since you voted to to set the schedule in the first place. So well, I, I would move that we reschedule the meeting and all agenda items currently scheduled for January 26th to January 25th. Is that the right date? Um, and that we schedule a meeting for five o'clock or four forty-five on um, you January twenty-sixth. Motion, but you know, we don't have to. You know what we could do is because the clerk's office is also going to, have to verify signatures if they come in. Maybe we could do it for like noon on Friday. Cool. And then it could just be a Zoom meeting at noon on Friday, the 27th. Gives them time to verify signatures and it's still time to do the ballot. Yep. Does that work for people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's your motion? That's my motion. I second it. <laughs> Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? There we are. Oh, Problem so. averted. Yes. Right. That was my favorite part was. Nice. Get the yes. Okay. Um, Councillor Brown, you're by not being here in person, you're missing out on baklava. So now we have a uh, from Turkey. Oh from my Turkey. gosh. That's one of my favorite things on the planet. How, how soon can you be here? I, I I don't have a car. I have no way to get there. Sorry. Okay, so Should now call Chief Norton send it. <laughs> lights and sirens so now item 11 proposal for housing and conservation project on Gould Hill Road um, and we I would entertain a motion to enter executive session well someone is, else is going to make the motion <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I, I move to find that premature general public knowledge of property, uh, property. You know, real estate. Oh, it's oh, real estate. Just... I move that we enter executive session to discuss the property on Google Hill pursuant of one VSA 313A. 317 section 13. And is there a second? Actually, she's right. 313. Okay. okay. I second. Okay. I second. Any discussions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion includes that the uh, 
city manager will go into the meeting with them and the parks with us and the and parks director. Meeting. Okay. And, uh, and, the block will. It, and are we anticipating that we would be uh, coming back to we'll be voting tonight, Alec? Okay, so we will be coming back out for action. Okay, so we, we will be returning. Though, we... Um, probably. The... So we can be on, on, yeah, on okay. in the public. Yeah, I, just... I would think so. All right. And uh, so I will get out of this meeting and go to the executive session because. Yeah. So, Carrie, you log in into executive session too. Is there a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to come out of executive session. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Do we have a motion? So I believe the council wanted to um, have a motion that authorized the city to purchase uh, 51.42 acres on Gould Hill Road for the purchase price of $52,000, to authorize the city manager to sign all related documents, and to authorize the city manager and parks director to um, pursue all pursue the VHCB funding uh, to reimburse the city fully and to authorize the city manager to advance funds to be reimbursed to uh, facilitate this purchase. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And anyone opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Nothing further on the agenda. Uh, no objection. The uh, meeting is adjourned at 9 p.m.